Hello, welcome to our Sunday service. This is Tropeza TV. We are broadcasting from Nairobi, Kenya. Wherever you are, you're most welcome to the worship of Jesus. Jehovah Jireh, you are my provider. Jehovah Nisi, you are my Nana. Jehovah Rohi, you are my shepherd.
utukufu na uku ni wako hata milele na milele ni wa kwanza na mwisho mweni afa na omega twa
We love you. We honor you. We glorify you. We exalt you. And we lift you up. Now fill your people. Touch your people. Encourage your people. Bless your people. Prosper your people. Comfort your people. Change the lives of those who call upon your name. Thank you for flowing through us in wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, and the prophetic. Thank you for all the gifts that you've given us for worshipping you and for serving your people. Blessed be your name, today and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our live broadcast. I'm going to teach you on a very significant topic. And thank God for our worship team, Christian Jiroga, worship leader, and Judith, our music director, who has been playing guitar, and of course our media team, my beautiful wife is by my side. We are also blessed and happy. How to grow and mature steadily in Christ. How to grow and mature steadily in Christ. Now, most Christians find it difficult knowing what to do in the Christian faith. Now that you're saved, what next? Now that you're born again, what next? You need to grow. So I'm going to give you different levels of growth that you need to use to evaluate your own self so that you get to know whether you're making progress as a child of God or not. These are levels of spiritual growth. So the first one, and I'm going to move really quickly, is brephos. I'm using Greek terminology because we don't have the right English words for these levels. So brephos is the Greek word for the first level of growth as a Christian. B-R-E-P-H-O-S. So the day you got saved, you became a brephos. So the very first time you go to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you became a brephos. But you can't stick there. You have to grow beyond brephos. In First Peter 2 verse 2, the Bible says, as newborn babes, the word newborn babe says brephos, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So we've already been given the key to growth. It is called desiring the sincere milk of the word. But you see, that's just for a baby. Babies take milk, the mother's milk. But they have to be weaned so that they can grow to higher levels. But as breathfuls, the day you got saved, or as you get to this realization, get into the word of God. Your appetite for the word of God must be very, very strong. The way babies always want to eat, they want to suckle milk. Whatever they find, they want to put in their mouth. So that's how you are supposed to develop a voracious appetite for the Word of God. Okay? So it cannot be business as usual. You can't sit back there saying, I'm a Christian, I'm saved. Life goes on. No. You must have your Bible. You have to read it on a daily basis. There is no baby who stops taking milk. They can't say, look, I took milk yesterday, so I'm not going to take milk today. Babies will consistently take milk. So the Bible says here, like a baby. You see, the Bible is full of similitudes, okay? Allegories, metaphors, something similar to another. So you've got to have the, that level of desire for God's word if you are to grow. If you don't have that desire, you will not grow. And if you don't grow, guess what will happen to you? The flesh will grow above your spirit and demons will overwhelm you. The Bible says that those who hear the word of God and they don't have depth, in the word and then the devil comes and steals that word every time the devil steals a word from you he places a demon in you because he also has his word and the propagators of his word are evil spirits they're the ones that teach people how to hurt others they're the ones that teach people how to slander how to gossip how to lie things like that they have their own vocabulary so i'm teaching you the word now if you are a spiritual baby and you stick there for long this word I'm teaching you right now will be stolen from you by the devil. And then you'll be left there wondering, what's the Christian faith about? You'll start getting bored of the things of God and you easily backslide. Yeah? So as a newborn baby, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. There are certain things that will affect you if you haven't grown to a certain level. You need to grow to overcome those things. Okay? In 2 Timothy 3.15, Paul is praising Timothy. He says, and that from childhood, from breakfast, from the day you got to know Jesus, you have known the holy scriptures, you see, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith 
which is in Christ Jesus. A lot of people do some certain things that are foolish. A lot of people get into business and they fail. Others get into marriages and they fail. There are certain things that people do that make them fail in life. It's, they're called foolishness. But here, Paul tells Timothy that from when he was a brephos, a newborn baby in Christ, he knew the Holy Scriptures. That means this guy read the Bible. He knew the Holy Scriptures. And the Holy Scriptures made him wise for salvation. There is wisdom that only comes from the Word of God. So you can't sit there that, oh, I'm safe now. You know, that's it. You must become a student of the Word of God if you're to grow. If you grow constantly in the Word, then you'll grow to the next level of maturity. And this is the level called nepios. N-E-P-I-O-S. Yeah? This is the level that is mostly ruled by feelings. If you don't feel the presence of God, then you think something is wrong. If you're praying and you don't feel goosebumps or some heat or some wind flowing around you, then you think something is wrong. If you don't feel anything, you think, ah, things are wrong. That's the level of nephews. It's ruled by feelings. It's mostly ruled by the senses. Yeah? But it's not a wrong level unless you stick there for too long. All these levels are good levels unless you stick there, you know, for ages. Yeah? A person at this level depends so much on their mentors or their pastors or their apostles or prophets. They can't do anything without seeking the guidance of a prophet or an apostle and all that. These are the people who sometimes you find uh, calling themselves with the name of their spiritual authority. They're nepuses, okay? They think life cannot be lived without their spiritual authority. It's important to have a spiritual authority, but remember you also have a life to live. And you need to build that life up yourself. That's why the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's Philippians 2. Okay? And verse uh, 12 going to 13. You've got to work your own salvation. Okay? So, a person at this level uh, has a higher appetite for the word of God, which is why they grew from breakfast to nephews. Yeah? And uh, prayer begins to take effect in such a person's life. But sometimes they find praying difficult. Okay, by the time I'm done talking, you'll know your level. Now, there's nothing wrong with staying at a certain level as long as you don't stick there forever. You need to keep growing. And by the way, you can be a spiritual baby in one area and a mature father in another area. And that's okay. You just keep building things up until you are well balanced as a child of God. Okay, God is merciful. He'll allow you to grow in one area while you're working on another and then that area also grows for example you could be a very intelligent person but you don't know how to handle money so your intelligence brings you money but your lack of financial prudence makes it difficult for you to invest there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're willing to learn how to invest so that your ability to invest money will be at par with your ability with your intelligence and you might be very intelligent and you know how to handle money but you're not so good in relationships so God gives you grace to grow from breathless in relationship to nepious in relationship until you become a person that can be related to. Are you getting that? So appreciate how God operates in your life. You could be a person who's extremely good in relationships, but not so good in emotional matters. You're easily angered or you easily get scared. A, a lot of things make you afraid, yet you're loving and caring. So you see, when it comes to emotional strength, you're a breathless. When it comes to marriage or relationship, you're probably way up there. So God gives you grace to grow your emotions as well. Others don't have a strong will. So they're easy, they're gullible. They're wonderful, they're loving, they're caring, but they're gullible. They believe whatever they're told. Whatever strong message comes on, they quickly believe. So they're tossed to throw and fro with every wind of doctrine. God will still give you grace to grow in that area of your will, okay? Others are weak in the body. They are always being affected by all manner of sickness and disease. So when it comes to physical health, they are spiritual babies. But when it comes to other things, they could be very strong. So what you need to do is subject the word of God to that area that is weak so that you may also grow. Desire the word of God in that area. If you're weak physically, you're ever being visited by sickness and disease, desire the sincere milk of the word of healing so that you can grow in physical health. If you're weak in finances, desire the sincere milk of the word of 
wisdom in finances so you can grow up in finances so the area that's weak needs to be fed with the word there is no room for guilt or condemnation okay mm -hmm. just feed that part until that part grows you get that mm -hmm. you see feeling guilty about your plant your potted plants that oh look at my potted plant you know it's not growing too well anymore feeling bad about the fact that it is beginning to wane to fade and the leaves are beginning to look like they're dry feeling bad and feeling horrible and even repenting about it won't help what will help is if you start pouring in water and putting in manure that thing will just grow naturally so for you to grow don't feel bad about the mistakes you make don't feel guilty about anything instead stick to the word even look even if you're a drug addict even if you're a prostitute whatever it is as long as you're sticking to the word of god as long as you're focused on the word of god you will grow come on rahab grew she was a prostitute okay mary magdalene grew she had seven demons as in seven strong men and remember every strong man has about two thousand demons underneath them every strong man in the body of a human being has at least in fact, between 2,000 to 6,000, it's called a legion, okay? One legion is between 2,000 to 6,000. So this woman had seven strong demons, each with at least 2,000. So that means, uh, how many demons? Yeah? 14,000, right? Mm -hmm. But she grew. She began to touch the feet of Jesus. Jesus taught her the word. She became so mature, you see? Are you getting me wonderful people mm. even samson grew see god never gives up on anybody guys god is not like your grandfather mm. or your angry uncle or your angry boss or, or your angry preacher no he's patient he would have killed everybody by now mm. look at how he was patient with the israelites the israelites rejected him for 40 years they're told go this way no we want to go the other way eat this good food no we want cucumbers and and garlic and the things of Egypt you know worship me and I will heal you and I'll remove all the diseases of the Egyptians from your body now we want to worship idols they were so stubborn but God was patient he caused them to grow are you getting me can you people see God the way he really is God is not like some religious bigot based on do's and don'ts no he's a loving father wanting you to grow up okay if God did not want you to grow up, he would have killed you. He can do it. He can snuff you out. But the fact that you're breathing today, you're breathing the breath of God, the life of the Father. Okay? So don't be so concerned about your faults. Be more preoccupied about your desire for the word of God. Are you hungry for God's word? Even if you're the worst of all offenders. Are you, are you hungry? You know, this is a mistake that most people make. When they make a, you know, when they do something wrong, according to the opinion, they think, oh my goodness, now I can't even sing. They can't lift their hands. It's in singing and lifting up of your hands that you'll grow up, okay? Because you're giving a sacrifice of your lips, giving praise to his name. And that's what people who are growing up do. They worship God. When they lift their hands, they're like the evening sacrifice. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. But some people feel like, oh my goodness, I went and got drunk. I got into a drunken stupor. I didn't even know how I got home. Now I don't think I'll go to church. It's so embarrassing. You need to run to church. That's where drunk people are supposed to go. Okay, that's where there's sobriety, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, come thinking like it. God is going to make you grow as long as you stick to the sincere milk of what? The word. So if you can't control your appetite, you keep drinking, you keep smoking weed and stuff like that. You, there are certain aspects of you you cannot control yet. Keep subjecting that part of you to the word of God. You will grow up. You see, in the kingdom of God today, God is not looking for your perfection. He's looking for your maturity. Okay? Your growth. This is why the Bible says a Christian cannot sin. What is sinning? Sinning is refusing to believe in Jesus Christ. How can you believe in Jesus Christ and refuse to believe at the same time? Sin is no longer doing something wrong. Sin is refusing to believe. Unbelief is what's called sin. Are you getting it? So now that you have been declared righteous, a saint, what God requires of you is growth in different compartments of your life. Okay? Mm -hmm. The same way you grew in school, you started learning how to, to write letters and numbers. After some time, you could scribble. You see, you grew by what? Practice. Consistently going to school. Hearing your teachers and doing the homework. 
Do the same with the word of God. I promise you, you'll grow. Forget about what people say about you. Because they cannot make you grow, can they? The criticism that people subject you to cannot make you grow. Even their anger against you cannot make you grow. Only the word of God will make you grow. Is this thing helping you? Yes. Glory to God. So Nepius is the second level of growth. But this is a level where you're mostly emotional. And it's okay. Yeah, There's no condemnation. You feel, oh, I don't feel God's presence. Maybe God has left me. That's the Nepius level. Oh my goodness, I got angry with somebody. Gave him a piece of my mind. Maybe the Spirit of God left me. That's Nepius level. Oh, is God still pleased with me? At this level, people ask, where is God when things are hard for me? Where is God when my back is aching? Where is God when my mother died? Where was he? You know, they ask such questions because that's your level of understanding of God. But you can move a little higher. Let me give you scriptures that talk about nephews. First Corinthians 3 verse 1. The Bible says, and brethren, uh, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto nephews or babes in Christ. You see? So Paul said, even the preaching that I brought to you was that of babies. Because you guys were still carnal. You still sense rule. He didn't discard them. He didn't say you are lesser beings in the Christian faith. No, he simply said, I need to break these things down for you like a kindergarten child, you know? But you will grow. He said, I couldn't speak to you spiritual things. I spoke to you, you know, carnal things like, Recently, I've been talking about tight. Yeah, tight is for nephews. It's for spiritual babies, all right? It's not for mature people. So I saw a lot of spiritual babies on my Facebook page. Everybody had their little scripture. They were mostly stuck to Malachi 3 verse 10, mm -hmm. trying to, to show me Malachi 3 verse 10 as if I've never read it. You know, by the time you're an apostle, you know the Bible. Yeah? Amen. Okay. Amen. So <laughs> they were all showing me. Uh, Acts 3 verse 10 says, you must bring your tights up. In the Bible, if you want to grow, find out who is talking and to who is it talking and in what dispensation. Is it the old dispensation or the new dispensation? And if in the new dispensation, is it talking to a baby or is it talking to a mature Christian? The speech is always different. You see, the way I talk to a child is different from the way I would talk to an adult. So understand the Christian faith is dynamic. It's not static. Okay? There are different levels. You get me? Mm -hmm. So things like give so that you can be blessed, those are for spiritual babies. All right? We are blessed, so we give. Mm -hmm. Now look at the Bible. Every person who gave to God was already blessed before they gave. Mm -hmm. Abraham was so rich, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Then he decided, ah, let me give a little tithe to Melchizedek. When the kings, of, the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah and all that said, please, all the booty, all the loot you've got from the five kings that attacked, Keep them. He said, no, lest you say you made me rich. He said, I'm already rich. The guy was rich before he gave tight. Are you getting me? Yes. So if you're mature, you're blessed first. Then, out of the blessing, you give. If you're immature, you give so you could be blessed. Are you seeing it? Mm -hmm. That, oh, let me give my tight so that I can have money. Oh my. As you mature, you realize that you already have everything. All things are already yours. So go ahead and make the money. Then you can be a cheerful giver. But most people somewhat attach blessing to giving. That is for babies. Okay? That if I give you something, you will love me. Mature people will love you anyway, even if you don't give anything. Okay? Are you getting it? So there are different levels of growth. Yeah? So, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto nephews, babies in Christ. Hebrews 5.13 says, For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, a nephews. Now, one of the characteristic traits of a nephews is that a nephews does not know how to talk. When they open their mouth to speak, they get into trouble. They're ever saying something wrong, you know? They always think the Spirit of God spoke to them, but it's just their emotions they're feeling. The Lord told me, and the Lord didn't talk to them at all. It's okay, because you are practicing the process of growth. Are you getting it, my wonderful people? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So it's a wonderful level of growth. In fact, Jesus himself said that out of the lips of nephews, out of the lips of babies, God has ordained praise to steal or to avenge the enemy. So nephews is fine. But if you stick there, you're going to be backslidden. 
and you're going to start getting bitter and you're going to start getting angry with God when you are the one who's not doing your bit. Are you getting it? Mm. From the level of nephews, we move to Paidion. Paidion. This is a person who's been eating the word of God seriously. Praying in tongues. Seeking God. Worshipping him as a matter of discipline, not as a matter of feeling anymore. Oh, I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like reading the Bible. That's the nephews level. Paidion level, you're now a committed student of the word of God. You do your homework now. You study as a matter of discipline, not convenience. Okay? So this is a Christian that's now developing spiritual intelligence. Paidion. Okay? Like in the normal world, Paidion is the level of high school. This one can speak two or three languages quite well. They understand a lot of mathematics and science. They can do a lot of work. That's a Paidion level. Okay? Nephew's level is primary. Breakfast is like kindergarten. You get that? Okay? Now, we can't discard you because you're kindergarten. We love you anyway. We can't chase you away because you're primary school level. We love you anyway. But don't stay in primary school all your life. Move on to high school. Okay? To Paidion level. So this, this one now is disciplined enough and knows how to study and knows the word and knows how to pray. They begin to identify and to submit to mentors. They have a relationship with their teachers now. They know which teacher to go to for what, okay? They can even ask for extra lessons if they feel weak in a certain subject. Are you getting that? Mm. They know how to reach out to their spiritual leaders. Mm. They say, look, I need help in this particular area. They start developing relationships with their spiritual leaders. They become friends, not servants. Now, those who mm. are scared of their spiritual leaders are at the level of nephews. The ones who are at the level of Pideon and become friends with their leaders. They become colleagues with their leaders. Like Paul called Timothy and Titus, you know, my partners in ministry. You see, they were partnering with Paul. Paul could trust them and send them. So this is a level where we start feeling comfortable being a friend rather than a person who is afraid of grace. There's this common thing happening in the church today that, oh, don't, don't get too familiar with grace. Don't get, you need to be extremely familiar with everything. Familiarity is how you grow. Okay? Yeah, I know the English people say familiarity breeds contempt. Only amongst fools. I want to be familiar. The Bible says acquaint yourself with God. Be familiar with him. So that you can know the deeper things. Okay? I want to be familiar with my wife so I know her much better. And my children too need to be familiar with me. So they can know how my heart beats. Yeah, there are people who are afraid of being rejected. That's why they make it difficult for people to access them. You know when somebody is inaccessible... You will work very hard to attain to this unattainable thing. So you, they become like a magnet. You know, they, they become like a, a puzzle, an enigma of sorts. So you're always puzzled by them, always trying to figure them out. Yeah. It's okay when people get close enough to you to also see that sometimes you may have weaknesses. And if they leave you as a result, that's fine too. They left Jesus, they left Paul. Paul went to preach in Asia. And he started a ministry there and it was flourishing and people were coming. One day he woke up and went to church and there was nobody. They all left him. Yeah, It's written. The Spirit of God inspired that and told Paul, write this in the scriptures. Everybody in Asia has left me. <laughs> he went to a nation to preach and everybody left him. So don't think that if people leave you, something is so awfully wrong with you. They left Jesus too. Didn't they? At the point of crucifixion, was there one disciple with Jesus? Not one. They ran away. Okay? They ran away. Are you getting me, you wonderful people? So there are stages in life where everybody will leave you. You're left alone sitting on your butt and wondering what to do. Scratching your hairy scalp, you know? If you're mature, you know that's a season. And that season will come to an end. Another season will come. All right? Paul would go to places and there are thousands of people coming to hear him. At some point, everybody forsakes him. He sits under a tree and, tree and just prays all by himself. Yeah. He sings the hymns all by himself, preaches all to himself. You know? Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. So Pideon is the level of high school. You are so intrigued with knowledge. You want to know and you study a lot of things at that level. 
you have this book and that book and you're holding this one here and you're about to finish that and you have your bookmarking this one and bookmarking the other one yeah any news you hear you're you're curious yeah glory to god are you getting there now at this level you learn the fear and the love of god the re reverence towards god and loving him but if a pideon stagnates that person becomes proud arrogant because they've tasted the supernatural power of god they become proud there's nothing you can tell me yeah a, sto a story is told of a, a young boy who was 14 and because 14 is the level of Pideon really that's more or less the level of high school right mm -hmm. so this guy was 14 years old and he thought his parents knew nothing nothing at all but daddy knows nothing this guy is old-fashioned reverend mommy they are so slow everything they do is so slow mm -hmm. you should see how they type on their computers but you see that slow speed is what feeds you there's a way that slow, slow speed tries to attract, tends to attract dollars vis-a-vis -vis your quick typing, yeah? Anyway, the boy thought the parents knew nothing. Now, seven years later, when the boy was now 21, you know what he said? He told the parents, you guys have grown so much in seven years. You seem to know everything. Oh, yeah? <laughs> He thinks his, his like parents that. that grew when he's the one who grew up and started having an understanding of how life is really lived. Amen. Sometimes it's lived in that slow lane. Amen. Okay? Wow. You know, they talk slowly. <laughs> if you ask them for money, they respond slowly. Really? Everything you ask them to do, they do slowly. <laughs> they take their sweet time to do everything and think, time is running out. Mm. And then as you grow seven years later, you also start seeing some of these slow things. And you say, wait a minute, what my father used to tell me is actually true. What my mother used to tell me is actually true. These guys are wise. That's a pideon. But if a pideon doesn't grow, they become extremely proud. And the Bible says pride comes before a fall. A stagnant pideon will resent correction. They don't like being corrected. They take it personally. They think, you're coming at me. Why did you correct me? Why did you rebuke me? Why are you telling me what to do? You're coming at me. Yeah? So they, they tend to get hurt when they're corrected. Yeah? That is the stagnant one. Okay? So First John 2.13 says, I write to you, fathers, because you have known him. That is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, Pideon, little children, because you've known the father. The Pideon knows the Father. They know the supernatural. They know the word. They can speak in tongues. But they're not mature yet. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. Now, if you stick to prayer and the word and active mentorship and you take correction, even if sometimes it makes you feel pain, you will grow to the fourth level, which is near niscos. Look, I've already posted this on my Facebook page so you can actually be following the, new, the notes as I talk okay you see God has called me into the supernatural prophetic ministry of teaching when I teach I teach prophetically which is why every time I teach you think I'm picking on you yeah <laughs> are you getting that this guy is just talking about me this guy what this guy is maybe he's angry with me you know <laughs> now I'm too mature to be angry with you okay our father pater that's a very high level of maturity, okay? I'm at the level of a father, okay? So when I minister, I minister prophetically. My prophetic gifting is not necessarily coming to telling you, oh, your name is so and so, this and that is happening in your life. I begin to preach the word of God and you'll know I'm talking about you. Even if you're a thousand, I will be talking about you as an individual. That's my prophetic calling, all right? Yes, of course, I can do the other prophetic ones, you know, the prognostication and the like, okay? The forensic ones. But this is really my forte. My forte is in prophesying as I teach the word of God, okay? I see you need to know your calling. My gifting is in teaching. In fact, my wife and I made our first million by teaching. It even brings us money, that this teaching thing, okay? All right. So, so as a minister, you'll, you'll feel like this man is picking on me. I'm the one who acts like that. Yeah? Yes, you are. I'm talking to you. <laughs> okay, I'm talking to you. So, Nea Niskos, what's the spelling? Go to my Facebook page, you rascal, and, <laughs> and read it from there. There's some people that want me to spoon feed them. That's why I call them a rascal. 
No spoon feeding. Come on, grow up, grow up, grow up. You, by the way, you can grow in a matter of hours if you want to. Yeah. Because of impartation. Impartation can make you grow very fast. All right? Do you know your fortunes can change by just meeting somebody great? You can grow from a lower level to a higher level in a matter of minutes. Okay? If a president appoints you to an office, what happens? From a nondescript, obscure fellow walking on the streets to honorable so-and-so. Right? In one moment, at the stroke of a pen, you can grow to something high. So stick with me and listen. Neoniscos. So this is a strong young man in faith or a young woman. Of course, they lack experience, but they've defeated demons. They know how to cast out demons. They know, oh, this problem is caused by a demon. Their discernment is sharp. They know about the ministry of angels. They have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. They know God the Father. They know God the Son. They know God the Holy Spirit. They're strong in faith. Okay? Are you getting me? Uh, but they don't have a lot of experience yet, though they are skillful. These pray in tongues and they walk by the word of God. They manifest some wisdom and they can be trusted with leadership, even without supervision. You get that? Mm -hmm. But if you are stagnant as an Aniscos, you can cause a church split. Because people start trusting you and depending on you for the word. And you know people always gravitate towards the person they like. The one that dispenses the word in the way they like. They will always feel pulled to such a person. So even if you're under a um, pastor or prophet or whoever, when a Nehemiah stands to preach, a certain group of people, a certain number within the church or within the congregation or wherever, will feel more attuned to this fellow. You get that? And then they'll start being loyal to this fellow much more than the big man or the big woman. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. So when such a person is immature, they will draw a third of the angels, yeah, and start their own ministry. <laughs> you can't sing me. Because they can minister. They can cast out demons. They can heal you. They can really minister. But because of lack of experience, they may not be able yet to run a ministry. Okay? So when a person at Neoniscus level is immature, or when they stagnate at that level, they can decide that, hmm, this boss of mine, well, what does he think he is? I'm going to start my own ministry. And when they do, people follow them. The only thing is that the people following them will do exactly what they also did. To reach a point where they leave you like Paul was left in Asia. Yeah? And then you go back with your tail underneath your legs, you know, rained on like the prodigal son. And if you find a good father, of course, they will just embrace you and raise you again. Okay? Glory to God. No condemnation at all. Yeah, it's called growth. Amen. Amen. Are you getting that? Mm. And Neoniscus has conquered guilt. They're no longer operating at the level of guilt, which means it's easy for them to get into error. They don't feel guilty about anything. Yeah, so they may be doing something wrong, but they don't feel anything about it at all, which is a good level to be. But you need to have sharp discernment so that you can hear the voice of the Spirit when He corrects you. The Spirit of God corrects you in a very gentle, subtle way. Okay? There's a day I was going to some place. The Spirit of God, you want me to go there. There was going to be danger ahead of me. So you know how the Spirit of God warned me? I was driving. So three dragonflies came and started flying in front of me in a formation. And then they quickly turned around and started moving towards me. I was going to hit them. Then they flew upwards and then came back again. I said, Holy Spirit, according to what you've taught me, when you see flying things, they usually represent angels. So what is it that you're teaching me about? And these things wouldn't leave me. They would, they, would be like, they would come in front of the car as if to tell me not to go to that direction. Then they'd move to the direction I was supposed to move. And they did this persistently until I made a U-turn. And then they also turned with me. You see, that's not normal when you're dealing with insects. Yeah? Mm. They turned with me. And after I was out of danger, they flew away. So God was showing me that there are angels you can't see right now, but you can see the dragonflies. So I'm going to use them to talk to you. These are called prophetic codes. Yeah, are you getting that? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So that's, a, that's being, being a keen and then being detailed in hearing God. So a Neoniscus ought to be like that, so that the Spirit of God can govern you and guide you. So before you lose your temper, before you get angry with somebody, the Spirit of God will tell you. Usually, if you disregard the Spirit of God, he stops talking about the matter. 
He gives you up to your device. So just go ahead and do what you want it to do. If you get back to the realization that you're wrong, the Spirit of God will guide you again. He never gives up. He's very patient, okay? So don't think you have committed the unpardonable sin. You can't commit it if you're a Christian, all right? 1 John 2.13 says, I write to you, fathers, because you have known him, that is from the beginning. I write to young men, neoniscos. Young men, there's neoniscos. Because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the father. So 1 John 2.13 contains three groups of, uh, or levels of growth. Acts 2.17, the Bible says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I'll pour out from my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your near nispos shall see visions. This is a point where these young people are now seeing into the spiritual realm. They're hearing the prophetic voice of God. They talk in tongues. They can interpret tongues. You know, they, they can do all these miracles, miracles that are found in First Corinthians chapter 12. Yeah, You get that. So your young men shall do what? See visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. So a steadfast Neoniscus who submits even more to training and mentorship then graduates to the best level. It's called Uihos. Uihos. Okay? And Uihos is a mature son or daughter who can now inherit the father's estate. This one has been trained in the ways of God. So this one can run ministry. They can run a church. They can run a department. Okay? These ones cannot cause splits. All right? They don't rebel. Okay, they don't secede. <laughs> they, they don't start their own factions. They love teamwork. They can stick there for a long time even if they're not the boss. You see, at Neonisco's level, a person might still might want to be given responsibility. I want to be the boss. Okay? Do you remember Aaron and Miriam at some point when they were Neonisco's and they assaulted, accosted Moses because Moses married a black woman from Ethiopia. You know, Moses had one problem. He wasn't a good father. Did you know that? You know, God is not bothered by your weaknesses. He'll use you anyway. Do you know Moses was not a good father? When he got Gershom, what happened? He failed to circumcise the guy. An angel came to kill Moses for neglecting to circumcise the guy. It is Zipporah, the wife, that took a sharp stone and circumcised the boy and said, you bloody husband, yeah? Bloody idiot. That's what Zipporah called him. I'm telling you. Now read the Bible. <laughs> You're a bloody idiot to me. Read your Bible. That's what Zipporah said. Good. Yeah? Good. You bloody fool. That's what she said. <laughs> Go read. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moses was not a good father. He wasn't a good husband either. He rejected the wife. Told the wife, Go back to your father. I'm busy with ministry. So... <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't a good father at all and why do I say so Gershom and Eliezer are mentioned only once when they are born you don't hear about them again but sons of prophets during those days would be mentioned the son of Abraham Isaac was mentioned the son of Isaac Jacob was mentioned all the sons of Jacob were mentioned yeah but you don't hear Moses his family being talked about until his father-in-law, Jethro, taught him how to handle people. He was so busy. Jethro told him, you're going to die in ministry. You're going to die. Can you appoint people, trust other people to help you do this thing? He was a one-man show. He did everything himself. Do You see, God helps even the prophets to grow. He used people just like you with faults and weaknesses just like you. So why can't you just let God use you? Are you listening to me? Just let him use you. You didn't want Moses for a father. He rejects your mother. Tells all of you, go back to you go back home with those kids of yours. He neglected his children. Then later he decides, oh, I think I need a wife. He marries a black woman. Where is Zipporah? Ah, she's with her father. He went back home. Why? Did you disagree? No. I told her to go back home and visit ministry. Then why are you marrying this one? <laughs> that was Moses. You can imagine what Moses told that lady. Yeah? What's up, babe? <laughs> yeah? The lady said, I like the way you start. I like the way, I like the way your, your, your mouth moves when you talk to me. Oh, 
So cute. Say that again. I would. I would. I would. I would. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> That's Moses now. Try to try to be a smooth guy. You know. <laughs> The Ethiopian woman said, never met a more romantic guy. He talks in tongues, this guy. <laughs> that was Moses. Dream. He was a horrible father, but a great prophet. Okay? So don't worry. If you see somebody's faults, God will still use them anyway. He will not consult you. He'll use them anyhow. Okay? Every person God used in the Old Testament had Serious weaknesses and faults, but they understood they could grow from one level to another. So they said, I, Lord, use me anyhow. Use me. Use me. Okay? Use me. Remember David? He killed a guy because he wanted the guy's wife. Yep. He was sneaking around, you know, voyeurism. Ever heard of that? Looking at naked women when they bathe? That's what David was doing. <laughs> Huh? And because he was a king, he sent people to say, see that bathing woman over there? Tell her to come over here. The lady showed up, he slept with her. <laughs> David was not a guy known to waste time. So <laughs> and then the woman got pregnant. David said, ha, ha, we're in trouble here. Yeah, we're in trouble. There's going to be evidence. So he invited Uriah, the husband of the woman. David, David, David. You know what David did? He made the guy drunk. <laughs> he gave him alcohol until the guy goes, yes, yes, your, yes, my lord. You know, I've never seen you like this in my whole life. <laughs> now, look. David said, I want you to go home and sleep with your wife so that it appears as if... You know, <laughs> that pregnancy is yours, not mine. David! Yeah? Yeah, good. <laughs> you see, the people God uses. Amen. They're crazy like you. They lie sometimes. Oh, yeah? <laughs> to hide their weaknesses yeah. and faults. Yeah. Crazy like you. Mm. Uraz said, no, 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 not me. I was a soldier, a career soldier, and career soldiers didn't go home and when there's war. So I'm going to sleep. Out, out, out of this door here. Yeah. Good night, King. The Lord be with you. David said, huh, you think you're smart. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Yeah? And the guy was black. I'm going to kill the nigger. I'm telling you. So he plotted for this guy to be taken to war and then all the soldiers would withdraw from him. Then he died. Okay? That is David for you. But he grew up, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So if you're like David, don't give up. Never give up on God because you have an issue that bothers you. A certain weakness or a certain problem. Never give up. Stick to him. He knows how to turn people around. That's why this message is for you. Levels of growth. Okay? Levels of what? Mm -hmm. Growth. So when you reach the level of Ui host, now you can be trusted. But even then, an Ui host can still be a breath force in a certain Filled a certain department or compartment of their life. You see, like Moses was the father of fathers when it came to spiritual matters. But he was useless when it came to being a husband and a father to his kids. Do you realize Moses never raised anyone, any of his kids to take after him? Huh? It's the servant, Joshua, who used to watch him, learning from him, who took after him. Not his kids. Yet during those days, it's the child that was supposed to take after the father in ministry. So he was a hopeless father, but an amazing prophet. And God did not judge him for being a hopeless father. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. So you also don't judge your father or mother for being hopeless. God will use them in areas where they're yielded. Okay? Are we together? Yes. At least now you're going to see people very differently. There was a prophet. I forget his name. The Spirit of God will remind me. That man could not preach unless he was high. He couldn't. He would take his, was it rum or something? You know, backstage. You know, until he's completely high. Then they would hold him because he couldn't walk. He was extremely 
drunk. They would hold him and take him to the podium. Then he would hold the pulpit like this. Yep. And then signs and wonders, miracles, the power of God would hit the place. But we, without alcohol, he couldn't preach. You see how God is. He's not like you. He's not judgmental like you. Yeah. We are weak too. But you only see other people's weaknesses. Huh? Huh? <laughs> are you getting me? God is not in the business of using perfect people. He uses those who are yielded, those who are willing to listen. Okay? Some people are so perfect they don't hear God. They only hear themselves. Yeah? You get that? So Romans 8.14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the uihos, sons of God. At this level, you start hearing the Holy Spirit. Okay? Luke 20.36 Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal to angels under the uihos of God. Being the uihos of the resurrection. These people understand the power of resurrection. Okay? Hebrews 12, verse 5 to 8. And you have forgotten the, exo the exhortation which speaks to you as to children. Uihos, that is. My uihos do not despise the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are rebuked by him. Uihos, when they are rebuked, they stick to the one rebuking them. They don't run away. Okay? And nephews, when rebuked, Turns against you and runs away slandering you. <laughs> you get that? Mm -hmm. And uihos can be told off. But the more you correct them, the more they stick to you. You see, the Bible says God deals with them as sons, as uihos. Alright? He says, verse 6 of Hebrews 12, For who the Lord loves, he disciplines and scourges every uihos whom he receives. You notice God does not scourge a nephews. Only uihoses. He only disciplines the uihos. It is until you become an uihos that you start going broke. <laughs> when you're being disciplined in the area of finances, you started work and you had so much money. Suddenly, where is the money? Well, why is it so difficult to make money nowadays? Don't, don't worry. You're being disciplined. It's coming back, okay? You're being disciplined. Don't worry. Because God now knows you're not going to give up, okay? So, he tightens the budget. He knows you won't give up. At this particular time, you start fighting a little bit more with your spouse or with your girlfriend or somebody. You find that things that were easier are a bit harder now. You have matured to the level of uihos. So God is chastising you. Okay? He's sharpening you. If you don't give up, all these things that you're lacking right now will come. You know? In double portions over you. At this level, you wonder, why do I pray for people and they get healed, yet I have this medical condition that doesn't seem to go away? That's uihos, okay? Mm. Are you getting that? God knows that you can handle that issue. One day it will go away, but not yet. Okay? Are you with me? Yeah. Because God is teaching you how it feels when somebody is unwell. God does not use disease to teach you. No, the condition becomes your personal instructor. So that when you're going to heal sick people, you have the compassion. And you can also teach them to wait for their healing. Are you getting that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright, that's uihos. This is a very chaotic level of the Christian growth. Things tend to fall apart at this level. You say, but I've walked with God. I pray in tongues. I read the word. What's going on? Discipline is going on. Okay? Verse 7. If you endure discipline, this is the level of endurance. If you endure discipline, God deals with you as an uios. If you endure discipline. Remember how soldiers are disciplined. They are caused to go through some hardships. Sometimes they don't eat the whole day or for two days. I remember a friend of mine who's a soldier. He told me there's a point that they didn't sleep for three straight nights. They were just walking. Walking, you know, from morning to evening. Throughout the night, they were just walking. It's called endurance. Great <coughs> Developing that stability that it takes so that you can defend the borders of your country. Are you getting that? Mm -hmm. yeah? So if things have been falling apart in your life of late, you're looking for a job is not coming. You're looking for a spouse, nothing. Nobody, nobody's even stuttering like Moses towards you. Hey, baby, baby, baby. Hey. No, no, no one is telling you anything like that. Not even a stammerer comes your way. But I'm beautiful. But I'm, what's going on? Uihos is what is ailing you. Okay. <laughs> 
It's a tough level of, of the Christian faith, ladies and gentlemen. Right? The Bible says, if you endure, God will deal with you as an Ui host. For what Ui host is he whom the Father does not discipline? But if you're without chastisement, of which all are partakers, then you are illegitimate. All right? And not Ui host. In other words, the word there is a bastard. That's why if you come to my Facebook page and you're acting foolishly, I call you a bastard. Somebody says, why do you insult people? Look at you, idiot. <laughs> a bastard is not an insult. It's, it's a state of growth. It's a level of growth. The Bible says here, if you're without chastisement, then you are a bastard. The word illegitimate there is also a bastard and not an ui host. If you can't take correction, you're a bastard, right? Mm -hmm. An uihos can take correction and rebuke. That's the difference. They will serve God whether they have money or not. In fact, mostly they don't have the money. Okay? They struggle here and there, struggling here and there. But one day, you will be perfected in finances. You will be perfected in relationship. You will be perfected in all these hard things. And you'll move to the next level. Okay? I'll take you there. Galatians 3, 25 to 26 says, But after faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For um, the one under schoolmaster is what? Paideo. All right? They still ask questions like, Is it okay for a Christian to drink? You know, <laughs> they are under rules and regulations. Okay? Is it okay for a Christian to wear short things or tight things? Is it okay for a Christian to dance? Is it okay for a Christian to listen to secular music? You know, they have questions that high school kids should be asking. It's okay if that's your level. It's all right. Okay? Are you getting me? So, Pideon is a person under a school master. They have to be supervised. Otherwise, they won't go to class. Yeah? <laughs> they eat too much. So, you have to tell them, no, enough. Yeah? For you are all the children, uihos of God by faith in Jesus. And if you're Christ, then are you Abraham's offspring and heirs according to the promise? You see, an Uihos who has passed the test of persecution is then now promoted because this one can inherit. But you can't inherit as an Uihos, you inherit as a Telios when you have perfected some of these things. Telios is the next level. Okay? And this is the last one I'm going to teach you. So this is a fully grown and mature child of God. This one knows how to use the word of God. Rightly dividing the word of God. They are not perfect yet. Remember, perfection is about maturity. So even after you reach the level of telios, which is in English called perfect, but in the kingdom of God, perfection is not being without fault. In the kingdom of God, perfection is fulfilling your mandate. Like a woman who's given birth has perfected her role as a mother. Are you getting that? So if you graduate from university you've perfected that aspect of life it does not mean you as a person can't make mistakes are you getting it mm -hmm. now most people misunderstand the christian faith they think the closer you are to god you're perfect in everything you can't forget things you can't make mistakes and all that so when they see a man of god or a woman of god making mistakes they start saying i don't think he's a true minister of god god does not look at that aspect of it god looks at the fulfillment of his mandate so, now that I'll preach to you this thing, I'm perfect. I'm telios. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. Because I fulfilled what I was called to do. That's what God looks for. If you do your business and make money and your business succeeding, you're perfect in that area. So, fulfilling your calling and your mandate and your assignment is what's called perfection. It is not in character that, oh, this one, he never does anything wrong. Absolutely perfect. So, if you see a minister, has, maybe they were speeding. And police stop them. And you say, but why is it that he was speeding? I thought he was a minister. It's not about that level of perfection. It's the perfection of, I sent you to heal the sick. Did you do it? Yes, I did. You're perfect. Are you getting that? Mm -hmm. I sent you to win souls. Did you get somebody saved? Perfect. That's what Telios is. Now you can be sent and you fulfill your mandate. You do your assignment. You're not afraid to do your assignment. Amen. Amen. You get that? Amen. Hebrews 5.14 says, But strong food belongs to those who are full of age. These are telios. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to design both good and evil. 
You see how powerful that is? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Atelius is full of God's word. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 20 says, Brethren, do not be nepios in understanding. However, in malice, you should be nepiazo, a smaller version of a nepios, okay? That when it comes to being mal malicious, be a fool. Never be malicious, okay? But in understanding, you should be telios. You get that? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4.13 says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son, who is of God, to a perfect man, telios, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So how do you go from breathless to telios? Mm -hmm. The word of God. The word of God. The word of God. I can't overemphasize the word of God. If you're watching me, and you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, I want you to be the breath of God, the child of God, so that you can grow as well. So you get into a, a more intimate level of maturity with God. So that when he comes, he will call you his child. He'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. Okay? I want you to get saved. Say this prayer after him. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you're the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again for my justification. Today I receive you as Lord and Savior. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I'm now saved. Glory to God. If you prayed that prayer, now you're a child of God. Welcome to the kingdom of God. You are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Those of you who are watching us, I'm going to read all your comments later and I'll be praying for every single one of you. Any moment I like your comment, if it turns blue down there, I've prayed for you. I usually lay hands on those comments and I pray for you, okay? And God always answers my prayer. So, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us. I love you so very much. My wonderful team loves you. There are some you don't see. They are not all in camera. Ah, others are behind cameras. Others in the studio audience. Yeah, we love you. We pray for you. And we bless you. Till tomorrow. Bye-bye.